All right, everyone, I am in the town of Mound Bayou, Mississippi, the oldest U.S. all-black municipality. Founded by ex-slaves in 1887, incorporated in 1898. Yeah, this town was founded by Isaiah Montgomery, who was born into slavery, as well as his father, Ben Montgomery. Uh, the slave owner was Joseph Davis, who at the time was the wealthiest, or one of the wealthiest slave owners in the United States. Joseph Davis was also the older brother of Jefferson Davis, who was the Confederate president during the Civil War. Now, Joseph Davis believed in educating his slaves, and so Isaiah was taught how to read and write, and taught history, given a full education, as well as his father, Ben. Now, his father, Ben, had always dreamed of founding a black colony here in the United States, but never realized that dream. He passed away before it could happen. So Isaiah uh, realized that dream for his father and founded this town, Mound Bayou, in 1887. And the town was very prosperous for a very long time. Uh, the farmland was all owned by ex-slaves and uh, cotton was grown. President Roosevelt visited the town and said it was a shining example of what former slaves could do. And, well, in the early 1900s, uh, cotton prices collapsed. And um, a lot of these farm owners that were black lost their farms and the town has never since recovered. Here is a picture of the bank of Mount Bayou as it looked in 1910 and um, here's what it looks like today. Now back to Isaiah Montgomery, the founder of the town. He was a bit of a controversial figure. He was a delegate for the 1890 Mississippi Constitutional Convention. And as a delegate, he voted for denying anyone the ability to vote who could not pass a literacy test. As you can well imagine, many freed slaves in the late 1800s could not read or write. So that effectively prevented them from being able to vote. Now this is the house that Isaiah lived in until his death in 1924. And he lived here when he was mayor of Mount Bayou. It looks like they planned or plan on renovating in it sometime. You can see a sign there, but the sign itself has been washed out. It's been sitting there a very long time and it's in pretty bad disrepair. Well, so I'm gonna take a look around town and I'll show it to you. See what's here. This is uh, the downtown area. Uh, here's the um, post office. Mound Bayou, Mississippi. Let me uh, go over here into what is the older part of downtown. And I'll start telling you about it. Uh, the peak population of the town was in 1980 and there were almost 3,000 people here. Uh, today there are 
1,534 people here. So since 1980, nearly half the town is gone. Population loss. Median age is 38. Okay, let me go here. This is City Hall's right here. I'm gonna show you that. There's City Hall, Mound Bayou. Uh, it's blocked off for some reason. I wonder why. Anyway, uh, yeah, median age is 38. That's about the same as it is in the U.S. The uh, gender breakdown is pretty interesting. 57% female. 43% male. So the women outnumber the men here. Some more numbers. Uh, I guess we'll start with the ethnic breakdown. Here it is. Uh, this town is 100% black. So to this day, it is still all African Americans that live here. Median household income is $31,100 a year. Uh, that's $600 a week. Poverty here is uh, it's pretty high, 46.3% overall. Seventy-one percent for children seventeen and under. Uh, for folks sixty-five and older, it is twenty-six percent. It's an empty, boarded-up house. With the population loss, I would expect to see quite a few empty homes here. Uh, we'll see what we can find. However, uh, cost of living is very low. For the United States, if the index is 100, uh, it is 78 here. So cost of living is 22% lower than the rest of the country. And everything's cheaper, gas, groceries, utilities. But especially uh, home value, the median home value here is $61,000. Now, $61,000, that's pretty cheap for a house so another number uh, crime crime is low here latest uh, numbers 10 incidents per 1,000 people for the US it's 23 so crime here is less than half what it is in the United States as a whole As I drive through the neighborhoods, it looks uh, pretty nice. Solidly middle class, but um, yeah, it's nice neighborhoods. It's a nice house right there. Yeah, it looks like this through much of the town. Not seeing a lot of mansions or anything, but just nice, well-kept, middle-class homes. You see the median home value, what was it, a little over 60,000, and you think, what can the houses look like? But they look pretty nice. Uh, you just simply can get a house here a lot cheaper. Yeah, it looks... Um, Looks really nice. Now driving through town, I expected to see quite a lot of this here because of the population loss. I mean, the town has lost about half its population since 1980. But, yeah, I'm not really seeing it. A little bit of fun history, by the way. The Marvin Gaye classic, Let's Get It On was written here. It was initially written by a guy named Ed Townsend, 
He wrote it right here in this town, of Mount Bayou, and it was a protest song when he wrote it. But then he brought it to Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye listened to the groove and the vibe, and he said, you know, this is, uh, this is not an angry song. This is, well, this is a song about being with your lady or your man in the evening and having a good time. So together they reworked the song to the love song that it became, the classic love song, one of the greats in our history. Well guys, uh, I got four towns I'm gonna show you total. And then Nicole and I are gonna go out in Clarksdale, which is where we're staying. We're gonna go to the Ground Zero Blues Club later in the video. And I'll tell you about that at the time, you know, when we get there. So uh, anyway, yeah, I'm going to uh, end it here and head to the next town. I am entering the town of Jonestown. Jonestown, Mississippi. Uh, it's got some horses out here. I guess you guys can see that, can't you? Uh, I'm approaching the downtown. This um, is a former farming community that is struggling a bit because obviously farming jobs just aren't there like they used to be. Peak population of this town was in the year 2000, so just 24 years ago. There were 1,700 people here. Uh, today there are 960. Now, welcome to Jonestown. Okay, I'm going to head into downtown right now. Uh, the median age of the town is 35, so that's a little bit lower than the U.S. But uh, here's an interesting stat. 65% of the town is female. 35% male. So. Two out of every three people here are female. Well, I guess that's it for downtown. I'll look around a little bit here. Uh, the town is 100% black. Just like Mound Bayou. Well, let's see, the median household income here, it's low, $20,000 a year. That's $385 a week. That is median household income. So half the town makes more than 20,000, half the town makes less than 20,000. I checked per capita, just for fun, per capita income here is $12,600 a year. That's $243 a week. So incomes are very low. With the loss of farming, yeah, the town is definitely struggling. Poverty, as you can guess, is very high. 56.4% overall. 17 and under, it is 78%. Sixty-five and older is fourteen percent. That's actually not too bad. I'm back in downtown now. The uh, streets of the town are kind of nice, aren't they? Cost of living here is very low. Uh, Seventy-three percent of what it is in the U.S. If the U.S. is one hundred. 
So cost of living here is 27% lower than the rest, or compared to the rest of the US. 27% lower, that's a lot. Housing especially, uh, housing or median home value here is $45,000. $45,000. That's, well, it's one of the lowest that I've seen in my travels. Another number that really sticks out, though, is percentage of people married. Only 20% of this town is married. Now, this is I would guess the top employer, and it is the top employer, it's the Delta Oil Mill. They do produce a lot of cottonseed products here, even though from what I understand, it is struggling as well. That's quite a facility though, isn't it? Now crime, it's low. Latest numbers, 11 incidents per 1,000 people. That compares to 23 per 1,000 for the U.S. So crime here is, uh, it's over half lower. You can see some poverty here though. I would expect to see a lot of abandoned homes here because the town has lost close to half its population uh, over the past, what, 24 years? Honestly not seeing too much though. Let me look around a little bit more. Surprisingly, I'm seeing very little in the way of abandoned homes. I honestly expected to see uh, a lot more. $45,000. Uh, median home value, that is extremely low though. You can see it here and there. store of some sort here. Jonestown Grocery and Washateria. I'm not sure if that's still operating. Well, there is the occasional empty house though. Here's one here. That is, uh, that one is abandoned. There's one um, that clearly caught on fire. You can actually smell the burn. Wow, it's got an overwhelmingly strong smell of burning or burn you know what I mean you know what I'm talking about when you smell something that's burned you can really smell it there wow well, that's not livable neither one of these are oh, actually somebody lives there that just doesn't seem uh, possible. Yeah, just 
checking some of the neighborhoods out here. There is what looks like was a store at one time and a gas station. Yeah, it is uh, long closed. Our business next to it. Long closed as well. I am in Cahoma, Mississippi. Let's see, I thought this is where City Hall and everything was, but I don't see any signs. Let's see, peak population of this town was in 2010. There were 377 people here. Today there are about 220. So that's close to a third of the population gone in just 14 years. Median age is 36. A little bit younger town than the U.S. The U.S. is 39. 53% of the town is male, 47 female, so that's a little bit closer to normal. 99% of this town is black, 1% Hispanic. Yeah, there's not a whole lot here. Very quiet. Uh, median household income, 22800 a year. That is $440 a week. It's not very much money to live on. Poverty, really high. 48.2% overall. 17 and under, it is 58%. Folks 65 and older, it is 50%. So for the older folks, it's really high. Cahoma General Store, I don't know if you can see that. I don't think that is open anymore. Let's see, cost of living here is 26% lower than it is in the rest of the U.S. So very low cost of living. Median home value here is $53,000. Again, that is crazy low. Let's see, crime, it's not too bad. Last year, three incidents per 100 people. That's a little higher than the US, which is 2.3, but such a small town. That's what, six, seven crimes. And virtually all of them were property crimes. A lot of mobile homes. So that's uh, one of the reasons for the very low median home value, I'm sure. These mobile homes just aren't worth as much. This town has been decimated by the loss of farming. 
like many towns here in this part of Mississippi. Here in the Delta, all this incredible farmland. Fortunately, only, only a few make money from it. Because uh, big farms, they just don't need a lot of people to operate them anymore. Yeah, you definitely see the poverty here and there, though. All right, guys. Um, seen just about everything here, so uh, it's got one more town. Let's go check it out. Welcome to Lula. Established 1890. Now this town, the peak population was in 1940. There were 503 people here. Today there are 202. That's a big loss of population. Uh, median age is 49, so this town is definitely older. Gender breakdown, 50-50. I'll tell you the poverty numbers in a minute, but they're pretty bad. But the town first glance sure looks nice doesn't it this does not look like a really poor town at least not yet uh, let's see the race breakdown it's 98 percent black two percent white that is a pretty house median household income 36,000 250 a year, that's 700 a week. So income's here a little bit better. Poverty is still high, 28.2%. Children 17 and under, 71%. Folks 65 and older, 15%. Again, cost of living, very low. 26% lower than the rest of the US. Got a little bank here, Southern Bancorp. How about that? Looks like a city park, maybe. Place for the kids to play. Now this is downtown. That's a pretty bad shape, isn't it? Uh, not much going on here. Looks like uh, used to be a gas station right here. Still one gas pump sitting there. Uh, not much else. Not sure what this was. This looks like it may have been a grocery store. Yeah, it is uh, closed now though, isn't it? Let's see another number that sticks out like the last town. Not very many people are married here. Only 28%. Uh, of the town is married. Got a little bit of a traffic jam here though. Surprised to see that in a town of only 200. <laughs> Another number that really sticks out, 53% of the town has a female head of household. 53%. Zero males or head of household in this town. Uh, the last 47% is married couples and 
single people with no children. Uh, median home value here, very low, again, $49,000, uh, $49, median home value. Yeah, that is, that is very low. Yeah, a little bit more of the downtown here. That's pretty much it. Very small town. Now let's look around and see what else I can find. This house, mostly burned down. I guess the town can't afford to tear it down. Do you see some real nice homes here? Here and here. And right across the street. That was a beautiful house, but it is just disintegrating there. Uh, is this a church? Yeah, Lula Baptist Church right here. Now at the end of the street, uh, this house looks like a mansion. Yeah, that is a beautiful house. See that green bus? That is an interesting looking vehicle, isn't it? I wonder if that's worth anything. All right, we are in downtown Clarksdale, Mississippi. Birthplace of the blues. <laughs> and some people think, and I agree, birthplace of rock and roll and country. Oh, you agree, huh? I agree. These oh, great okay. blues musicians came out of Clarksdale yes, and- you agree. You're right. the authority, right? That's right, I'm the authority. <laughs> they uh, came out of Clarksdale, and of course, white people reinterpreted all this blues music into rock and roll and country. This up ahead is the Ground Zero Blues Club, founded by Morgan Freeman, the actor, and a uh, half owner. It is considered world class. The maybe the greatest blues club in the entire United States, maybe even the world. Maybe, huh? And we've been here before. Yeah, we have. But we're back, because <laughs> we really like it. And maybe we'll see Morgan Freeman, but probably not. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah. Anyway, uh, lots of good live music here. So um, there we go. Let's go check it out. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, bye. I like GoPro. Oh, this is a DJI. Oh, it's my. I'm not a videographer. Oh, yeah. But you seem like you might be. Right. Well, we're going to uh, sit at the bar. Okay. All right. So, uh, uh, there's the stage. There'll be some music there later. We have ordered appetizers fried green tomatoes and fried pickles. Nicole is having Cabernet. <laughs> and I'm having a local beer, Clarksdale Ale. It's really good. All right, our appetizers are here. These are fried green tomatoes. So why are the tomatoes green? They're, they haven't <laughs> turned red yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nicole's never had these, so these will be a first for her. I've had them before. And then we've I'm got... I'm not to, stubborn enough to have had them. <laughs> and then uh, fried pickles. Well, the fried green tomatoes are pretty good. They're not the best I've ever had, but they're not bad. What do you think, now that you've had them for the first time? 
I think maybe I'm still not southern enough to have fried green tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> They're okay. They're okay. Good. Yeah. But I finally tried them. Yep, finally tried them. And the uh, fried pickles are really good. It's hard to mess those up, though. <laughs> well, the music's not coming on for about an hour and a half, so... We're going to uh, wander around Clarksdale a bit. Maybe see or hear some music somewhere else. Maybe take a ride in this limo. Yeah, this has been here a long time. You think? No, I know. No, I drove up in this. Huh? I drove up in this. It's part of the decoration That's of the my area. Ride. Yeah, it's part of the decoration of the area. Oh, okay. Thanks for clearing that up. Yeah, they got another one here too. <laughs> see that? That one's in your way. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, Blues Alley. Yeah, this is Blues Alley is what they call it. Pretty cool, huh? Anyway, they got some music in this bar over here, so uh, let's go check it out. Okay. And you can tell that it's blues music. I'm feeling the blues already. Sounds great. All right, so we listened to some music there. Now time for the main event. The Ground Zero Blues Club. We're gonna have some dinner here too. Our food is here. I'm having a barbecue pork sandwich with seasoned french fries and baked beans. And you're having chicken fingers with chicken fingers seasoned fries. and fries. Oh my gosh, my heart is yelling at me. All this breeze. And you're having honey mustard with it. Yes, I am. <laughs> well, this is Southern cooking. <laughs> Fried food. Yes, it is. That's why Southerners are so unhealthy. We're going to have some music coming on, it looks like, pretty quick. <laughs> so how is the food? Uh, this hand-pulled pork, barbecue sauce, it's awesome. Big messy sandwich. Fries are pretty good. They got some seasoning on them. These baked beans are amazing. I always love the beans. I do love beans. How's yours, hon? Mine's nice and fresh. The chicken tenders, you can tell they're nice and fresh. They didn't come in frozen, hand breaded. And yeah, and the fries are good too. So the chicken tenders are hand breaded? Yeah, taste it. Fresh. They, they taste that way. So, yeah. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yep. Pretty decent food here. everyone so that's the end of this video we are heading to Alabama next we will see you there